Hello, I'm John Everington, Africa and Middle East Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined today by Shola David Bora, CEO for Africa Regions at Standard Bank, which has topped the Africa rankings in the Banker's Top 1000 World Bank rankings for 2019. Shola, thank you so very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Standard Bank recorded a 6% rise in headline earnings uh, in 2018. Uh, this came despite a number of challenges in some of your core markets. Can you share a little bit about what you're expecting um, across the group um, for the remainder of 2019 and what kind of priorities you have as a bank during that time? We do expect that um, it will continue to grow our um, both top line as well as um, sort of keep an eye on our costs. We are optimistic given the um, projected growth rates in sub-Saharan Africa, mm -hmm. about 3.5 now. We are well positioned in the countries where we are present, 19 of them outside of South Africa, you know, to capitalize on this growth. South Africa has, I mean, is going through an interesting period in terms of economic development and the challenges there. What's the sort of the big markets you see the growth coming from um, in, in the coming year, would you say? Our sort of large growth markets um, include Nigeria, Ghana, Angola, um, Mozambique, um, especially with the signing of the FID um, last week um, mm -hmm. in ADECO. Um, we expect there would be a multiply effect uh, on that gas development. Kenya is also an important country for us, as well as Uganda and Zambia. Are there any particular trends that you see across all of those markets, which is, which is fueling growth I mean, ac across the continent? One is infrastructure. There are a few um, sizable infrastructure projects, you know, that would actually be game changers for the economy. I've already mentioned uh, Mozambique and sort of the, um, the gas projects that are going on. In Uganda, in East Africa, you've got the Uganda, um, Tanzania, the East Africa crude oil pipeline, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, is about a $3.5 billion investment without the upstream or downstream um, investments that would also follow on on that. We've had the Mozambique Nakala Railway project, which you know last year involves about 900 kilometers of rail line. You know, and it connects a coal mine to the Nakala port. Mm -hmm. um, so those trade corridors actually open up, you know, the markets. And um, there's an ecosystem, there's a value chain in terms of small businesses, suppliers, um, there's infrastructure, you know, um, in Tanga where the um, crude oil pipeline is coming, there's going to be an airport that is built there. So we believe that infrastructure is certainly one of the key enablers of growth. Also trade is another enabler. Um, the signing of the Africa you know, a continental free trade agreement is a step in the right direction. We think will help to further boost intra-Africa trade, which you know is still relatively low, below mm -hmm. 17%. Yeah. We've also seen greater macroeconomic stability in some of our key markets. Um, Nigeria, for instance, in terms of sort of the exchange rate, inflation trending down, interest rates coming down as well. All of that helps to build investor confidence and um, basically enable growth. The Africa continental free trade area um, is a big topic of conversation. As you mentioned, it was a very big topic of conversation at SWIFT's um, regional conference in Ghana quite recently. Um, what that, I mean, you talked about some of the big opportunities that that could well unlock across the continent. What are the big challenges you, you see um, facing the agreement still? And I mean, how do you think they'll be overcome? So you've actually got to get every single one of those countries ratify in their parliament. And then, you know, it's actually the execution because it's, it's the work to actually get it done so that the um, impact of the agreement is actually felt you know, with the trader you know, on the ground. And that involves um, harmonizing trade policies across regions, uh, reducing some of the trade policies. In the East Africa community alone, I understand there are about 600 trade policies that need harmonization or reduction. You know, you've got to um, ensure that the intention of the political leaders is ultimately translated to the right attitude at our borders, you know, um, enabling sort of free flow of people, goods, and, and, and ultimately capital. So I think, you know, apart from the challenges of actually getting the ratification done, the actual implementation is going to involve a lot of capacity, political will, and um, execution 
um, capabilities. Indeed. Well, it's a very exciting development and one to watch oh, yeah. um, as time goes on. Shola, thank you so very much for sharing your thoughts with us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.